What is happening, people? This is Chris Broussard, the host of In The Zone, and I'm glad you tuned in this week. We have a wonderful show for you. Our interview is with Steven Jackson, and you know Steve always keeps it real. That's one you definitely don't want to miss. We got Knocked Down Jay returning with my man Jason McIntyre. But as always, we start with the top five postseason player power rankings. A lot of shakeup this week. Guys that were in it last week, not in it this time. Guys that weren't in it are in it this time. And we start at number five, Draymond Green. That's right. Draymond is doing it all for the Warriors, leading the Warriors in blocks. Steals, rebounds, assists, playing great defense at times on Anthony Davis, holding him over the first two games of their series with the Pelicans to 48% shooting and just 23 points a game. That is great defense on Anthony Davis. And above that, Draymond is giving them 17 and a half points a game over the last three games for Golden State. Draymond Green, number five. At number four, Kevin Durant, that's right, Draymond's teammate. Look, Durant is the one guy that Steve Kerr has been able to count on for big-time offensive production through these playoffs, giving them 28 points a game, up this rebounding to nine boards a game. You know he's playing solid defense, and when Steph Curry was out, he did a nice job of orchestrating the offense, five assists a game. Now that Steph is back, it's going to be that much easier for Durant to score and that much harder for his opponents to stop him. At number three, surprise, surprise, Al Horford, Boston Celtics. Look, I got to admit, I don't generally think of Al Horford as a star. I know he's made all-star games and all that. I tend to think of him as a professional, as a guy I'd love to have on my team, as a great veteran voice in the locker room and on the court. But with Kyrie Irving out, my man Al Horford has delivered. He has played great basketball. He is averaging 19 points a game, a team high, eight and a half rebounds, way above his season average. And he's doing it on 62% shooting, including 47% from behind the arc. Gotta give props to Big Al. At number two, James Harden. I had to start giving the beer some love because he has given us major production. He is exercising the demons of past playoff failures. First of all, he puts it on Jimmy Butler, one of the greatest defenders in the league in the first round. And now he is doing it to the Utah Jazz. In game one, he welcomed them to the second round. Let them know it's gonna be a bit different than the Thunder in the first round. 41, eight and seven, James Harden doing nothing to make me regret voting for him as MVP. And at number one, LeBron James. It's time we gave the king his props. Look, you know you're having a great postseason. When you lock up the opponent's all-star point guard for the fourth quarter and overtime, holding him to three points. When you get a 26-point triple-double, when you hit a game-tying shot near the end of regulation to force overtime and then go on to win, you know you're playing well when that is considered a bad game. That's how good LeBron James has been. This has the, been the greatest one-man show I have seen in decades. He is getting it done, leading all playoff scores with 33 points a game, 54% shooting. If LeBron gets just a little bit of help, a wee bit of help, if Kevin Love stops playing like Kevin Hart and starts playing like the perennial all-star he is, then the Cavs will win the East once again. Give LeBron some help. I'm gonna give LeBron his props. He is number one right now in the postseason player power rankings. All right, we're here in the zone, and it's my pleasure to welcome my man, Steven Jackson. Glad What's to up, be brother? Here. Long overdue. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> you might be their favorite player's favorite player. You know, right? I think I think that's why I'm so loved. You know, I'm, I, I wasn't an all-star, which I should have been. I wasn't a, a one of the stars in the game, but everywhere I played, I played the game the right way. I, I gave everything I had for it, you know, and that's why I got so many fans, and people love me for that. So, you know, I'm a real one, people know. And uh, 
a lot of stuff is fake these days, so people hold on to the real. Yeah, yeah, nah, I hear you. First, speaking of real, man, I'm, I'm looking at your championship ring. How often do you wear that? When I'm on TV a lot, but right. especially, you know, since I've been doing TV in the playoffs, I wear it more in the playoffs because okay. it's around championship time. And, uh, you know, this is something that I hold on to, man. A lot of guys played the game and was never the best in the world, you mm -hmm. know, and that's something I hold on to, being drafted second to last pick, you know. This means a lot, it means a lot to me. I'm going to get to a lot of your career because I, I, I don't think people uh, understood how good you were as a, in the NBA and before that. So mm -hmm. I want to get to that a little later. But some of the news that's happened recently, Charles Barkley, you know, obviously what he said about Draymond, he wants to punch him. What would you think about that? Draymond replied, perfect. You're not going to do it, so why even say it? You know, um, I'm pretty sure Charles Barkley, if you want to punch somebody, punch Shaq. That's the one that beat, binged you up and slammed you on the floor. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, Barkley, we all know Barkley's just talking. Um, we know he's not going to do nothing. I, me, personally, I've never had a back-and-forth confrontation with the older guys because I respect them so much. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think they know if they came at me sideways, it's really going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Barkley knows saying that to Draymond is not going to really be an issue. Um, I think he was kind of out of line for saying that because Draymond is a grown man. You can't say somebody should punch him. Yeah. But Dray, like I said, Draymond responded the best way he could. You're not going to punch me, so just leave it alone. So Draymond did it right. You got you to defend yourself as a man. Now, LeBron is gone at Barkley. Mm -hmm. D. Wade kind of backed up LeBron, kind of went at him. Mm -hmm. What do you feel is the feeling of players around the league toward Barkley? Is there is there some tension there? Or well, Some guys get tired of the stuff he says or what? See, and, and this, this is where the fine line comes. Like, guys like LeBron and D-Way, we know they respect Barkley as a player. Mm -hmm. But when you're on TV and you feel like they're paying you to say these things or when they know that you're not really about that, you're not, you, you don't really feel like that. They feel like you're saying it because you're on TV. Okay. It's, it, it kind of makes him lose respect because we all know that for LeBron and D-Way to have confrontation or to go back and forth with words about Barkley when these two guys respect the game and the guys that came before them more than anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys are students of the game. So when Barkley says stuff like that and guys know that it's not really coming from him, it's from him being on TV and trying to be funny and stuff like that, it kind of takes away from the respect from him. But me as a person, I respect him. I just know he knows who to pick, pick with. Yeah, you know, he yeah. wouldn't do that to Zach Randolph. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I, I know what he's doing. Now, you play in the big three with Charles Oakley. Mm -hmm. um, he, he, a real one. Yeah, we know he don't really have any love for Charles. I know it stems, I believe it stems back to the lockout mm -hmm. in 99, 98, 99. Yeah. Were you there? I, was, I wasn't there, but I, I heard that Barkley walked up to him and slapped him. That he slapped Barkley. Yeah, that he slapped Barkley. That Oakley slapped Barkley. Yeah, if I'm not, I'm not knowing if it's true, but that's what I heard. I heard he went there and slapped him. Yeah, that, that's what I heard, too. Yeah, it like a, a child. Yeah, like yeah. Like a child, yeah. yeah. But I wouldn't put it past Oak. That's my OG. I, it's funny, we talk about him. Before I walked in here, I just got a text from him. And he told me, you look like a, a $100 million on TV. <laughs> a compliment like that coming from him, one of the best dressed guys in, in NBA yeah, history, yeah, you know, yeah. I, that means a lot to me. That's my guy, so we talk a lot. But if, if, if I heard that story and if Oakley's name was involved, nine out of ten times, I believe it. Why doesn't Oakley like Barkley? Do you know the backstory? I don't know the backstory. Okay. You know, I, you know I, I only speak on what I know. I don't, I don't really know the backstory, but I know it's been, it's been some beef for a while. Oak was regarded as the toughest, pretty much the toughest dude in the league. Mm -hmm. Like, nobody wanted to mess with Oak. Right. How did dudes know he was so tough? Well, it's, it's at a point where when a guy's talking, you know by his words and his actions if he really wants to go there. Okay. You know what I mean? Me, I'm, I'm cut from that same cl cloth of oak. You say anything disrespectful to me to in the game, my first reaction is, are you being disrespectful that you want to fight, or are you just talking for TV? <laughs> and I can tell the difference. Guys that's really been in fights, that's really been in wars, you know, I, I always say I speak three languages, English, Spanish, and body language. I know when a guy is really ready to go or if he's just talking. And nine out of ten times, guys in the NBA, they're just bumping. Yeah, I always say the easiest place to act tough is on the court. Easiest Cause place. Because you know it ain't going nowhere. Two, you know? two punch max, referees <laughs> come and break it up. Yeah, and you know now you get fined, you get kicked out of the league. See, we didn't care about that. You, yeah. I got fined three million for one punch. So I didn't care about <laughs> money. I, 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 I'm going to die before I be disrespected. How do you now as an analyst, and you, you know, you're talking about players and, and coaches and everything, mm -hmm. um, how do you weigh 
where you want to go, like how much you want to say, mm -hmm. how much you, because you, I'm sure you know a lot that you don't share on TV. Right. You know, how do you kind of balance where you want to go? Well, the best way I can answer this is this is the way I came in the game. I came in the game with being a straight shooter, being me, uh, love it or leave it. Um, I've never compromised my integrity or what I stand for for anything in my life, so there's no need to now. Um, when I'm, I have a job to do on TV, and that's to be honest, give my honest opinion about things, whether if I'm friends with a guy and he's not playing well, or just like when Durant did the fake page, I said something about it, but that's my little brother. Like, I, I got real love for KD. But I felt I'm so real and I'm, I'm honest enough where I can tell my brother, look, that was weak, you shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. On, you know what I'm saying? Let him know that, and we can move on from it. And guys around the league, the, the new younger guys and the older guys, they know me. They're at a the point where you only can be real with me, because if it's anything fake, I, I can sense it, and, uh, and, and 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 I'm not gonna respect it. And uh, I've always had that relationship around the league, and I want to be a coach one day, okay. you know, because I know I would be a great coach because I'm such a student of the game. And if me being me, who I was raised to be, the guy I've always been affects me getting a job further because I'm saying some things that people might not agree with, so be it. How soon do you want to start getting into coaching? Oh uh, well, you know, it's this is nothing new. You know, I've talked to Mike Brown about it many okay. times. You know, I've, if he ever he hasn't had a head coaching job, I'm pretty sure if he's had one in the last three years, I would have been on the on the coaching staff. I talked to Jerry Stackhouse about being an assistant coach with him. So uh even Mark Jackson. Okay. Uh, so it, it's been talked about a lot of times because people know my passion for the game. And the, and the knowledge that I have that I can spread to these young guys and teach them how to play with that passion, you know, some of that stuff can't be teached. You just got to have it. Now, we talked about the championship ring. You won at no three mm -hmm. with the Spurs. You had three seasons where you averaged 20 points a game or more. Excuse me, three more where you averaged 18 or more. Um, and you said it earlier. I, you, you think you should have had a better career. You had a really good career. You mm -hmm. think you should have had a better career. I, I, should, I definitely should have had a better career um, as far as accolade-wise. Um, I mean, to be the second to last pick to finish with 13,000 points, you know, that's, that, that's a lot. I know a lot of guys in the Hall of Fame that might not have 13,000 points mm -hmm. or a championship. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I've just been a, I've been a winner, Chris. I won on every level I've ever played in. Little League, uh, little league <laughs> overseas, high school, NBA. Every level I played on, I've been a champion. So I, I, I'm just a winner, man. And I, I've always, I never got my due. It had a lot to do with the brawl. Okay. It had a lot to do with the shooting at the strip club in Indiana. So a lot of it is me. A lot of it is me being too loyal to my friends okay. and, and, and helping them and putting myself in situations that I shouldn't have because I was loyal to guys that wasn't loyal to me. Like me shooting for Jamal Tinsley, I don't think he would have done that for me. Mm. You know what I mean? Marquise Daniels would have because he did it. But I, I don't think uh, Jamal Tinsley, so I regret doing that. Okay. I don't regret helping my team at the time because, you know, I, I didn't want nothing to happen to him. But what it, the, 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 the jacket it put on me is I'm a thug, you know, not knowing that the only two incidents in my life I've been in trouble for was helping other teammates. Mm -hmm. I went to help Ron in the stands. I went to help JT at the strip club. I've, I was never in trouble before that in my life. So, and I think that that affected me being an all-star, and especially in Charlotte. That year I had in Charlotte when I got traded to Golden State, I had a great year, and, and um, Paul had got hurt. I just knew I was going to make the all-star game. You know, I, I, I Paul even Pierce. Paul Pierce. I even talked to MJ. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm having. You know, I'm because Gerald Wise had already got in, and I really should have made it for Gerald because I was the leading scorer of that team. Gerald was great, but I brought that team. Once I got there, that was the first time in 13 years, the first time the organization has ever been to the playoffs. Mm. I led that team, and when Paul got hurt, and then they gave it to David Lee. This is personal. Mm. This is personal. You know, this this is not about what. This is not about. Me, a, me, the basketball player. And Baron Davis said this after we beat Dallas in game six. I think I had six or seven threes that game. Baron Davis said a lot of people, they say a lot of things about Steven Jackson, but they never, ever talk about how good of a basketball player he is. You're right. You're right. And I was going to ask you, do you think, I know the players give you the respect, mm -hmm. but do you think the general public of basketball fans doesn't really know how good you were as a player? But half of them probably never seen me, you know, and... Um, a lot of them don't know, but you know, I look at it like this. I've always looked at it like this. Never made an All-Star game. I am NBA champion. I made the rookie All-Star game. That don't, that don't count to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, I got respect for every get from every guy that I played against. From Kobe, um, uh, Tim Duncan said I'm the I'm the ultimate teammate. Don Nelson, the winningest coach ever, said I wish I had five Steven Jacksons. The type of compliments I got from guys around the game that's in the game yeah. that means more than anything else. 
one, I, what I remember you and my first recollection of you was you were a McDonald's All-American. Led the game in scoring. Yeah, it, it, I mean, Kobe, Tim Jermaine Thomas, O'Neal, Tim Mike Thomas, Bibby. Mike Bibby, all them playing in that game. At that point in time, did, who'd you think was the best player in the country? High school, did you think it was you or, or somebody well, else? Or? Me, I, I thought Tim Thomas was okay. a god. He was nice. Him yeah. and Kobe. I, I mean, they were. So you knew Kobe's. Okay. Yes, like, you know, I, I had seen guys like I, growing up, and even though I went to Oak Hill, I didn't really see being a portal out the Texas growing up. We saw the Rockets, but I didn't really didn't watch the NBA. You know what I'm saying? I saw highlights, and I'm, I don't even know we had cable around that time. You know what I'm saying? To watch games growing up. So when I got to traveling in high school and seeing guys like Tracy McGrady and Tim Thomas, I'm like, wow. Yeah. I, I think I'm good at 6'7. These guys, <laughs> seven foot, doing the same thing I'm doing in high school. So, but I knew I was one of the best. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew I was one of the best in my class, and that McDonald's game was my chance to show it, and I think I did. What did you, at that point, what did you think of Kobe? You knew he was coming out to go pro, but, you know, what you, did you think he'd become or had a chance to become what he did? Well, he was so big, like, they had... Like coming out of high school, and he was all over the media, going to the prom with Brandy. Yeah, like he yeah, was so yeah. built up. He was great in high school. Don't get me wrong, you know. But just as good as he was, Rip Hamilton was just as good. Okay. In Philly, that was his rival. What? Right there. Yeah. Like Rip used to serve Kobe. Like they used to go back and forth. Really? So okay. Rip was just as good at that time. I I could I would not sit up here and lie to you ever and tell you that I would th I, I knew Kobe would grow into the player he was. I knew he was good, but I didn't think he was gonna be one of the best ever. Now, you were going to go to Arizona. Mm -hmm. You didn't go because of academic and eligibility. And they won a national championship. I would have had another yeah. championship. See, I, went on, I went on every level. I, I'm telling you, they won that my freshman year. I should have been there. They won Who was it? Was that Jason Terry and all those guys? Jason Terry, with me, me and Mike Bibby, was the same recruiting class. And uh, wow. Eugene Eggerson. They had Mike, Miles, Miles, Miles everybody. Simon. Mike Dickerson. They had, it was yeah. the whole crew there. Okay. Um, so you went to Butler Community College for, you a said, week, a week? A week. <laughs> Um, and then you start going overseas. Mm -hmm. Now, and you drafted second round by the Suns. They cut you right away. They told me they was going to cut me. So, why, why, like, my thing is this. Scouts had to know, and, and GMs and all that, that you were like a high school All-American. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. they knew you had ability. Why do you think it took you so long to get to the NBA? Because uh, it was about three years. Yeah, when, I got, when I got drafted by the Suns, um, I owe all that to Mike Bibby's mom, because when I didn't make it in Arizona, I was about to go back home. And everybody from Mike's mom to my family, everybody knew that wasn't going to end well. Mm. Going back to gang banging and hanging out, you know, and not doing what I was supposed to do. And she, she let me move with her in Arizona. And she brought me, right before the season started, she brought me up to the Phoenix Suns Pax facility and asked one of the, one of the coaches she talked to, a Danny Edge, somebody, could I play with the guys? This is the year they just traded for Jason Kidd, McLeod, McDice. Wow. So they only had one pick. I think Steve Nash, they had an early pick and they had a last pick in the draft. I think Steve Nash was already drafted, I think. But they told me, we got one pick, 42nd pick in the draft. We're going to draft you. We're going to guarantee you 250000 but we're going to cut you and send you to the CBA. This is when they had the CBA around that time. Yeah, yeah. So I was, I'm coming from nothing. Yeah. You want to cut me? And give me money? It's a no-brainer. Yeah, I'll yeah, take yeah. it. Where where do I sign? <laughs> you know, and when they drafted me, you know, I had the little draft party, the little small draft party in the hood, in the garage. Everybody's upset. I'm knowing I'm already going second yeah, round, yeah. but I'm not saying that to nobody. Oh, they mad because you ain't oh, going they first kicking round. Oh, they kicking stuff. This, he's not that good. I'm sitting there like, yeah, man, don't worry about it. You know, <laughs> let God work. Let God work. And uh, when it came around, you know. But it, it took a while because, you know, I wasn't ready. You okay. know, like I said, I dealt with, I broke both of my feet at the time, so it was some doubts. Um, How'd you break your feet? Just I was playing born, ball? I was born with stress fractures in both of them. Okay. So the doctor told my mom when I was a kid, one day, they're going to break. And wow. this doctor had to be a genius because he said it was between the age of 18 and 21, and that's when, it, that's when I broke both of them. And the second one I broke was kind of, it was kind of worse than the first one because I was trying out for the Bulls. And it was two days before cuts, and I went from a team with no with the color jersey to two days for cuts, I'm on a starting team. Wow. So I was two days from making that team and broke my foot and I actually called that's the first time I ever thought about giving up. Mm. You know, I, I called my mom like maybe it's just not it. I called the crime. Like maybe it's just not it. I broke my other foot. Like maybe it's not meant for me to be in the NBA. Yeah. She she told me, so that's what you're gonna do? This is her response. So that's what you're gonna do? You're gonna sit on the phone and cry? I'm like, 
that's not the response I expected from my mom. <laughs> like, you know, I wanted some sympathy. She didn't give me none. So I wiped my tears, you know, went home, healed up, went overseas and bounced back. What do you think you would have been doing if you hadn't gotten to the NBA? Lord knows. Lord knows. Um, I wasn't a book smart guy. You know, I, I never took school serious. Uh, I knew as, as a youngster I had some talent and um, and basketball, but I don't know. I I don't think I don't think it would have been positive mm -hmm. because where 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 I was at the time it was two high schools, almost like eight sets of low income housing where I grew up at fifty thousand six thousand people. So everybody's doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't no no options to you know. But nobody showed me a way out around that time. I didn't know anything. I was trying to figure it out. So it wouldn't have been good if yeah. I didn't have basketball or if I didn't have a good family to keep me you know in the city keep me out of trouble during those times. When you go back to Port Arthur, if you go back, what's it like? Because a, a lot of guys talk about it's hard for them to go back mm -hmm. to the hood, or you know, you've seen guys get their chains snatched and stuff like that. What's it like when you go back? The earth is my turf. I go everywhere. <laughs> you know, uh, that's one. That's that's one reason why I love the person I am because people accept me everywhere because they know I'm genuine. I'm 100. You know, it's, 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 you can't find any flaw in my character. Uh, when I go home, it's all love. You know, um, my hometown loved me. I go home and, and do things like just like the hurricane. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a gymnasium in my hometown. I use my gym as a storage facility for, for different people and, and players that I had relationships with to send things like cleaning products, uh, infant meal, baby products, clothing, all kinds of stuff to help my city because they lost everything. Yeah. And uh, I fed uh, Thanksgiving a couple years ago, 800 families. It's not that many families. I didn't know they had that many families in Port Arthur. Mm -hmm. But me and Shaq came down and we fed 800 families. My city loves me because I've never changed. Mm -hmm. I always go back, you know, you might you might pull up in Port Arthur and see me uh, on somebody porch with my shoes off, eating, eating some food at somebody's house that, you know, that's not <laughs> even my family member. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm loved at home. and I, I give my city that same love because, you know, I give them a lot of props for, for helping me to get where I'm at because, I, like I said, I did a lot of things to mess up my life. But the people in the city, the guys who sold drugs, when I tried to sell drugs, wouldn't let me and just mm. gave me money. Like, all that meant something to me. Because they knew you could play. Exactly. You know? you know, And they didn't have to do that. So um, I love my city and I always go back. That's a good point you made. Because I, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. Remember a few years ago when Carmelo, it was early in his career, and he got caught on camera with a guy who sold drugs. Mm -hmm. Mello was just on the corner, you know, with a group of guys. Right. And people wanted to act like that meant Mello was involved with that. And you know, a lot of guys growing up in neighborhoods, you know drug dealers that, that take care of you. Dudes that might I be up, up to, to no good. Yeah, and that people need to understand that if you're from certain areas, you're just gonna know guys. It don't mean you doing that stuff. Right. But you're gonna know guys, they might be your friends, they might be family members and they've taken care of you, can you kind of talk to that? Because a lot of fans don't understand it. They think, oh, you just cut off so-and-so and so-and-so. Trying so -and -so to be and not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you asked me that question because I don't think nobody can answer it better than me. Growing up where I grew up, you know, something like saying most people don't have cable and we don't see NBA players. We don't see NBA games. So we all want a better life. We all grow up, especially in the hood, you want to be the one to get everybody out the hood and make a better life for the people you love. When you're in the hood and you're not watching the fakeness on TV, the only thing you see real is the drug dealers making the money and taking care of the whole city, taking care of their families. So you look up to these people because taking care of your family is all you dream of. Helping your family, being able to have money and live nice is all you dream of. You've been struggling so much that all you think about is a better life. So you see guys, yeah, they might be selling drugs, but these guys, might, they might have the, the biggest hearts ever mm -hmm. because they look out for everybody. And I know a lot of, I can tell you this, and this is the honest God truth. 20 of my, the 20, if I go home and I have 20 friends around me, 19 of them have sold drugs, <laughs> and 20 of them then did 10 or more years in jail. Mm -hmm. But that's just where I come from. I can't blame them. I don't blame nobody. That's just the cards we were all dealt, yeah. decisions that they made. But I looked up to these guys. This guy named Donald Ray, he got killed in the game, involved in the drug game. But this was a guy that when I, when I was trying to figure out my basketball and I wanted to make it to the NBA, this guy used to pick me up in these nice expensive cars, 
take me shopping. I wasn't his blood family. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he knew that I was a good kid that wanted to make it out, and my, my heart was genuine. He didn't have to come pick me up and take me shopping and all that. This was, a, this was one of the biggest drug dealers in Texas at the time, mm. you know? Mm. And I never looked at him as a drug dealer because he wasn't the guy paying people to go kill people. He wasn't the guy, okay, you disrespect me, I'm gonna get you shot. The, I don't know what type of drug dealers that everybody think, you know? <laughs> There's some drug dealers that's doing it for the right, re it's not right, but they're doing it for the right reasons, yeah. to help their family in a better life. And we understand that coming from that. You know, and we can't judge anybody because we all have done something, you know what I'm saying, that, that we regret in life, especially trying to come up from out the bottom. If you've never been in the bottom, then everything I said would be like, be like uh, foreign to you because you have to be from the bottom or be in that area to know how to appreciate people that's trying to help anybody have a better life. Yeah, a lot of people when they came to this country, I mean, and they don't have anything, the mafia, that's what they did. Mm -hmm. And no, people look down on them, but a lot of people glorify that too. Mm -hmm. Cause, and they do take care, I'm not justifying it, but they do take care of their families. And their and, neighborhoods. You know what I'm yeah, their neighborhoods, so it's, it's a similar thing. Um, you, the ring we were talking about, you won it with the Spurs in 03. Uh, what's it like playing for Pop? It was unbelievable because nobody would have knew about me. First of all, Mike, I give more credit to Mike Brown because okay. when I was in New Jersey, the second half of the season, um, Byron Scott didn't play me. After from making a rookie All-Star game to coming back, he didn't play me at all. I took him out the starting lineup and everything. But Mike Brown still knew what I could do even though I, when I wasn't playing. So I remember we was playing in Jersey. Mike Brown came up to me um, at the end of the game and was like, don't worry, keep your head, keep your focus. We come and get you this summer. And that summer, uh, I went to Utah for the uh, Utah Class Summer, summer League, yep, summer and I was league. second in scoring behind Dirk. Okay. And okay. and, um, and, he, and Pop came up to me. This was Pop's exact words. This one I fell in love with Pop because I love straight shooters. I has I have so many real friends in my life. It's easy to see a fake friend. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, mm -hmm. I, my conversations are so real. It's easy to see when somebody being fake. Pop came to me, just as real. Him and Don Nelson, the only two coaches to talk to me like this. And Rick Carlisle, Jackson, I want you on my team. Great player. You can't smoke weed on my team. Point blank. <laughs> That's all he said. I said, okay, Pop. I still did it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I, but I, but I, I told him, I'm like, the fact that he can't, I've never heard anybody yeah, yeah, come yeah, direct yeah, to yeah. me, I, I, especially a, a caliber coach of Greg Popovich, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and he, was, he, he had, that time he only had one championship. He wasn't the coach yeah, yesterday. Yeah, exactly. But I still had that respect for him, and I still knew the opportunity of playing with Tim Duncan and Dave Robson was something that I couldn't, I couldn't mess up. And uh, I told him I wouldn't. And uh, uh, he signed me. And the first year, they put me on injury list. The whole first year I was there. I didn't play. And, uh, but I kept my focus. Having Mike Brown there helped me out so a lot. So you were healthy. You were practicing. And yeah, doing okay. I was killing in practice. I was, okay. I was holding my own. And I was super frustrated because I felt like I wasn't playing. You know, they wasn't, the team wasn't that good that year. Yeah. And was that, that the, well, that was oh, what, oh, 02? That was Sean Ellis oh, last year. Okay, okay. And, um, I didn't play, and uh, I was frustrated whole year, but Mike Brown kept me focused. Pop just kept telling me, I think this is, what, this is another thing Pop told me that helped me have a long career. He was like, you're super talented on offense. If you learn how to defend, you have a long career. I defended in San Antonio. To me, around the 14 years that I played, I think I was a top five two-way player. Yeah, that became what you was known for. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, yeah. People might not, if people go back and look at my 14 years, the North 14 years, it ain't too many two-way players that was better than me. You know, I might not got the props I deserve, but if they look at the numbers and the team, every team I went to, I changed it. I helped them win. You know, uh, I was one of the best two-way players, and I, I owe that to Pop because once he let me know that if I was a defender, it will it, help me in this game. It will give me longevity. I took that serious. What was something about David Robinson and Duncan that people don't know or would surprise people? They both gave me something to my life that I needed being so young and not understanding that the NBA is a job and not just a game. Uh, Dave gave me the, what I had as a youngster, a foundation. Uh, Dave uh, is a church going guy. Mm -hmm. His wife is awesome. Everybody she come around, she's like a mother to. I was young at the time. Uh, they gave me that family feel, being away from home. Mm -hmm. Dave was like a father and his, wi his wife was like a mother. They invited me over on Sundays, I went to church with them. After games, they took me out to eat, all kind of things like that. They called and checked on me. When my mom wasn't in town, they'll call my mom. Is there anything that we need to do? It's like, they really wow. looked out for me. Tim was my big brother. Pop, you can say what you want, you can feel anybody. 
this is my little brother. I got him. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and that was one thing about Tim, especially when I started. I remember when I was uh, in Seattle, uh, I wasn't playing. I was, I was, I was uh, actually still on the injured list. And uh, no, I, I was on the team I wasn't playing, though. And uh, Greg Popovich called me into a room, his room. He said, come to my room after shoot around. We was playing Seattle and uh, in Seattle. And I went to his room, and Tim was already in there. Huh. I'm like, what? What's going on? Yeah. Felt better because I knew Tim was in there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> going in the pop room by itself, I don't know what's going to go on. You know, I'm still young at the time. I'm yeah. 20, what, 21, 22 around the time. So he sat me down, like, we're going to start you tonight. I'm like, okay. Because I was playing well. I remember I was coming off the bench. So this was, was the well. year y'all won the title? Because I know you started yeah. on the championship. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, uh, and I was like, okay. And Tim was like, yeah, um, you know, you've been playing well. We just want you to continue to focus. You know, come out here. We're going to start you in, in place of Steve Smith. We just want you to play the game you've been playing. I'm like, cool. As soon as he told me that, I done forgot Tim and Pop was in the room. I'm going to go to this locker room, and I feel like I'm going to have a confrontation with a guy that I love most or who's probably done the most for me on this team is Steve Smith. Yeah. But this is why I was blessed to play with great players. As soon as I walked in the locker room, Steve Smith grabbed me like, look, Bro, this ain't personal. This ain't between me and you. I'm happy for you. Man, you know the, 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 how I just exhaled and the, and the stress that took off me mm -hmm. because I had so much respect for him. I don't want to feel like I'm low-cutting him or doing something behind his back. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand the game at the time. But him being a veteran, the ultimate professional, and he, I guess he saw it on me, he came up to me like, Jack, you know, I love you. You my little yeah. brother. It ain't personal between me and you. You go out there and, you know what I'm saying, I, I, I was around great guys. You know what I'm saying? I was around great guys. And being in San Antonio, what Tim, Dave, what Tim and Dave gave me as far as being a family and, and like a brother and having a whole bunch of OGs, mm -hmm. Kevin Willis, Steve, Steve Kerr, all those guys, it was a blessing for me. San Antonio was great. Now, is Pop, he's known as being hard on guys. Is he that hard on players in practice? It's not. Just I don't generally? consider being hard. You getting paid to do a job. If you're doing anything less than that, if you if you doing any if you playing any less than hundred percent, oh he gonna say something. <laughs> if we sit there and practice and go through a game plan, and you go out there and you doing everything but the game plan, yeah he gonna be pissed. He has that right, and and that's the only time Papa's never a jerk or uh, or, or or upset about anything just because he can. Okay. You know the he'll he'll the same mistake I make, he might take me out from it take me out the game to, to get to me to show me, look, you can't make these mistakes yeah. as a young kid. But he might not take Tim out, but when Tim come out the game, he's screaming at Tim the same way he will me. Yeah. So you can't say that he picks on guys because he treat his best player just like he treat the last get, last guy on the bench, and that's why he's so respected. Are there guys, though, that couldn't handle that, like can't, couldn't play for Pop? Oh, I, I, at times I couldn't. Because, you know, it's times where he took me out the game and I walk, this the bench, I walk completely around just so I have to shake <laughs> nobody's hand because that's how upset I am. And then you can look into the time when I was there in 03, every time I came out the game, Mike Brown would walk down there and he'll stand in front of me because I'm down there, 20 curse words. Yeah, yeah. F-pop, all this type of stuff. And Mike Brown standing in front of me, you know, blo blocking it, blocking it, you know what I'm saying? Then he's like, you all right? You good? And go sit back down. You know what I'm saying? So they, they, they knew how to handle me. You know, I think if I didn't go to San Antonio, my career wouldn't have been as long as it was because I learned a lot about myself okay. and being a professional in San Antonio. Now, when you left there, you went to several teams, mm -hmm. Golden State, Indiana. Charlotte. It had some great, great runs. Uh, when you went back about nine, ten years later, mm -hmm. and they had won a few more championships, did you notice a change or – was pop stature was bigger or the culture was it different anything like that? I think the respect for pop has gotten it gotten bigger, but it was still the same for me. Okay. But one thing I knew before I left and going back, there's only three guys that pop really care about, and I mean like his guys. I can't be mad at them. They won in five championships, four or five championships. <laughs> so I can't be mad at them. But I knew when I my first year there when Tony Ginobili came, that was his guys. Okay. Tony Ginobili and Tim, that's his guys. Nothing comes before his guys. Winning comes before them, but these are his guys. There's nothing his, these guys can do to upset Pop. If you, if, if you look at Ginobili's career and you look at how many turnovers he has <laughs> in his career, you will be appalled <laughs> at how many turnovers he has in his career. Like, seriously. Yeah. But one thing I knew from being there with Ginobili, he one of those guys, you got to live with that because he going to make 10 turnovers, 
But that same pass that he tried, he gonna make it at the clutch at the, at mm-hmm. the right time mm-hmm. of the game mm-hmm. because he 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 you know he he has, he has the balls to do it, you know. So he had to live with that, and I and I understand that going. I understood that going back, uh, and Kawhi was there too when I went back. So yep. I I knew I knew the culture had changed a little bit, but I knew my role was gonna be the same because I knew the team didn't have no toughness. And as soon as I got there, Pop was like, "Bring the nasty." He had it all in the bring the nasty. I'm bringing you here to bring the nasty. And uh, it, it was a different feel, but I knew my role was the same. Now, you mentioned Kawhi. You've gotten to know him well. What do you think of this whole situation with the Spurs and Kawhi? Well, well it, it, it backfired on the Spurs. We've never seen a Spurs organization or teammates attack another teammate in the media. Mm-hmm. Tony's been hurt. He missed a lot of games. Mm-hmm. Ginobili's been hurt a lot. Tim was hurt a lot. You never heard them come out to me and say, well, Ginobili, should, you, I don't think you hurt no more. You yeah, should be yeah, playing. Yeah, yeah. You never heard them having any secret meetings and popping up on Tony and Ginobili or anybody else. So with Kawhi knowing this, y'all not finna handle me like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We don't, y'all don't act like this now that y'all need me. And y'all, Why do you think they did that? Because I think they did that because this is the first superstar that Pop can't control. This is the first Super Bowl you can you, you and Ginobili and Tony, y'all speak every day. You know their teams, y'all teams, y'all are family. Kawhi, Kawhi doing his own thing. Mm-hmm. He, he, this is the first superstar that Pop got with braids. It might not make sense <laughs> to a lot of people, but you understand what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. the first superstar he's had with braids. Kawhi is one of those guys that all he wants to do is play basketball and go down as one of the best ever on both ends of the court. That's all he focused on. He don't want to talk about it. He don't want to make excuses. But Kawhi is super smart. So he know that they handled that situation all wrong because mm-hmm. they needed him and they didn't want to be out like they are now in the first round. They knew they couldn't win without him. So they panicked and handled it wrong. They know they handled it wrong. Now they hoping that they can fix the situation, which I still think they can because Pop can make Kawhi, people don't know this, but he has another year. Yeah, so he, yeah, he, yeah. he can make him sit in that misery for a year if he wants to. So Pop is can. that is that your, how you think he'd fix Pop's it? Pop's not gonna trade him. Pop's not gonna trade him because he knows how good he is. He knows how good he is. So when you say sit in that misery, what do you mean? Like if if Kawhi wants out and Pop don't want him out, you are gonna sit here and play for me this year? But I I feel like that situation could could, could be fixed because Kawhi wants to win. Okay. And but I just think the Spurs got improved that situation. LeBron. Something, because <laughs> what's the there is not enough. Yeah. Even yeah. with Kawhi, that's not enough. Um, so do you think Pop put Tony and Manu and, and all in the meeting and all that, he was behind that? I played there four years, three, three and a half, four years. One thing I know about the Spurs organization, nothing goes on without Pop knowing. There's no way that no player going to call a secret meeting without Pop knowing. They don't call secret meetings. I've, I've never heard of anything <laughs> like that. And you can't call a, they'll never call a meeting where it's a surprise to Ginobili or Tony. Mm-hmm. So it shouldn't be a surprise to your best player. Yeah. There's a lot of things were happening unusual there and uh, it drew a lot of flags, but this is what the Spurs have been good at. There's a lot of stuff that's been going on there, but they've been good at keeping it in-house. Mm-hmm. But this is the first mm-hmm. time they've been, they, they, they dissed a, pub, a, a teammate publicly and it backfired on them. Now, you know Tony obviously better than mm-hmm. me, but when I've been around him and interviewed him, he seems like he don't have an edit button. Mm-hmm. Like he just, and I don't know if it might be a cultural thing, you mm-hmm. know, from France, but that he just says what he wants to say. Is it possible when he was talking about Kawhi and my injury is 100 times worse than <laughs> That he was just saying to him what was true, and he wasn't looking at it like, yo, I'm, I'm really going at Kawhi, or you think, you don't think that's possible? I think, what I was me, I know <laughs> that before he did that interview, somebody opened his back and put two Duracell batteries in there. Mm. Somebody put a battery mm. in his back to say that. That ain't Tony. You, 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 you not, you're not the type of guy to go at another person. You're not a tough guy. Mm. You, never, you, you didn't go at against, you didn't go at nobody else on your organization since you've been there, what makes you think you can go, he's going to just publicly and just all of a sudden, okay, I'm going to go at Kawhi now. Like, all that stuff was rehearsed. Pop knew it all from the meeting to what Tony said. They, it, it was talked about. It was talked about. Do they have to offer him the Supermax? That's the first olive branch? That's half of fixing the situation. <laughs> if they don't offer it to him, you think he wants if he's they, When they sit down, and if Pop first words ain't Supermax, that conversation going downhill from the jump. 
Mm. What else do you have there? You have to give him the Supermax. You have to. One of the best two-way players. And, and if they don't, knowing that there's other teams that's ready to give it to him, he's going to be out of there. If he doesn't go there, what do you think is the best fit? If he, doesn't, he doesn't go back to San Antonio? There, yeah. uh, me knowing he's a California kid, and I know he don't want to go east. He doesn't want to I don't think he do. I don't think he want to be in cold. You know, I don't, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think he would go east. I think he would come to California, even if the only reason I don't think the Lakers is because I don't think he want to go in a situation where he's losing. You know, I think Kawhi mm -hmm. still want to win, and I think losing takes away from him being a two-way player. I think mm -hmm. that's why he, he's looked at a certain way in San Antonio because he was a two-way player and the best at it, and he was winning. That's a different look. I think he wants to keep that look. Um, I just don't know where he can go to get it. Now, you think if LeBron leaves Cleveland, San Antonio is where he should go? Me, personally, I do. If, he, if he's ring chasing still. Yeah. I think uh, if he just want to continue to be the best player in the world and not make the finals the next couple of years, stay home. Mm -hmm. You know, just finish mm -hmm. your career there. If you want to take advantage of the years you got left, which I feel he, <laughs> what he playing now, he's yeah. going to be playing until he's 45. <laughs> uh, I think that with him and Kawhi, even Lamarcus are adding another piece there with the young core guys they got. They can win two, three championships. Yeah, I, and he's I, never played under a Hall of Fame coach yep. in his life. He I loves agree. Pop. Pop loves him. Pop's, uh, LeBron is Pop's type of guy, family guy. Okay. Does everything the right way. You know, people always talk about LeBron and Jordan. I want my kids to be like LeBron. I want my kids to look up. I look up to LeBron even though I'm older than him. Mm -hmm. Because out of all the players that they came around in the NBA history, he did one thing that every player failed at bringing your friends on and putting them in positions to be successful. He's the yeah. only one done it right. I yeah. screwed it up. I'm, I'm one of the guys. <laughs> I salute him because he's done everything right. He uses his voice when he needs to. This is something that we never talk about with MJ. LeBron is on it. We got to stop comparing LeBron and just put him on another level, on his own level. And I'm not saying putting him above Jordan, but he's just in a, he's just in a lane of his You're own. talking about off the yeah, court. Yeah, no, just period. No just period. As a person, as a player, he's in the category of his own. Now, LeBron, when he's on the team, you know, the, the talk is he runs the team, he's the GM, people joke he's the GM, he's the coach. How do you think it will work basketball-wise with him and Pop? I mean, could 15 years of kind of doing your own thing, or at least 11 in Cleveland, what do you feel like it would be with him and Pop? I think it would be uh, a mutual respect for each other. I think LeBron is going to let Pops be the coach he is, and during games or in games, Pop is going to lie Kawhi and LeBron to be stars and be leaders of the team. I don't think it'll ever be a problem because Pop loves guys that are students of the game. I've seen many a times where, I've, matter of fact, I've been on the team plenty of times where we come out of timeout and Pop is getting ready to walk. He'll give the clipboard to Tony Ginobili and he'll mm -hmm. go back and sit down. So he's, he loves his players having a basketball IQ and being able to lead and coach at the same time because it, it, do, it do, doesn't do anything but make the team better. Okay, okay. You mentioned LeBron bringing his guys, Rich Paul, Maverick mm -hmm. Carter, Randy Mims along, and, and really they set up now. Mm -hmm. What? Because I've heard stories, I, I even say horror stories, about guys bringing their boys with them, and sometimes their boys might even, you know, steal from them or mm -hmm. something. Other times they, they mean well, but they end up living off the player and really taking a lot of his money, not even purposely, but he just supporting you. Mm -hmm. What do you think, you know, is that kind of the norm for guys that bring their boys along and they don't, they don't, they think they doing them a favor, mm -hmm. but they end up losing a lot of money because they taking care of these guys. And it's, it's, it, it's a big problem for, especially guys come from where we come from because like I said, we want to make sure everybody's straight. We want to mm -hmm. help everybody. You know, we want to make everybody a life better. And what people don't understand is, me, is, I'm guilty too, because I didn't understand it. When I was given all this money, I wasn't taught how to handle this money. I wasn't taught how to put myself in better situations. I'm just making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It's just coming all at one time. So how could I help them yeah. be in situations when all I'm doing is giving them money. I'm not teaching them. I'm not taking them to the well. Mm -hmm, you know what I'm saying? I need to, I'm, I'm, excuse me, I'm not taking them. I'm not showing them how to drink. I need to take them to the well and yeah. let them learn to drink on his own. You know what I'm saying? I didn't do that. You know, I, um, you kind of handicapping them. You know, 
you, just, you, you think you're doing it right, but you was never taught the way to do it right. And so we feel like, okay, we got all this money. Money gonna help us. We, we gonna buy our way into success. We gonna mm -hmm. buy our way into helping our friends. And you can't do that because your friends don't have the attitude, if they don't have the attitude of, well, I'm gonna build something on my own so he can see that I wanna bring to his table and we can eat together. Yeah, That's the situation yeah. LeBron friends were in. They went to school and got degrees. Yeah. Okay, we know LeBron could put us in a situation. Let's show him we want it. Yeah. We don't give, me personally, I didn't give my friends an opportunity. Yeah, they, I had them doing little jobs and stuff like that, and I tried to help them build stuff on their own, but we was never taught the right way to do it. So I'm guilty of screwing it up a lot, and I owe my friends an apology because I did it thinking that money was going to, make everybody successful and it don't work that way. And every, a lot, 90% of the guys in the NBA came in thinking their money was going to get mm -hmm. everybody successful and a better life and it don't work that way. LeBron and his friends did it the right way and that's why I forever salute him. So what would you suggest to guys coming in that want to do that for their friends? Mm -hmm. Just follow his, his blueprint or what? Well, follow his blueprint, but keep the number low. Okay. It can't be 10, 15 guys. <laughs> Maybe sit at the table with you and four other guys. Before you even get a check, mm -hmm. before you play one NBA game, this is the best way to handle it. You sit down with those four guys, find out what they're interested in doing, but you got to know what they're good at. He might want to rap, but you can't rap. <laughs> you you yeah, might be yeah. good at promotion. You need yeah. to do this, bro. I know you want to rap. I know you like jerk, but you need to, you're going to be successful here. Yeah. Those type of conversations need to happen from the jump. That'll, that'll avoid a lot of wasting money that avoid you spending money on, on something that you want him to do, and he don't want to do it, now you don't waste two, three million. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you done opened the club, because you, you want a club, but you want the friend to own it, but he ended up partying more than doing business. This is not the job for him. You have to have those conversations and put guys in situations where you know they're going to succeed, succeed and stuff they want to do, and that's what LeBron did. Now, we talked about you going to Indiana. What was it? Meta, we had Meta on mm -hmm. two weeks ago. And he was saying, by his own admission, he was out of control in Indiana mm -hmm. before the brawl. Me too. Yeah. What was it like? What was what was it like with y'all that back then? I was I was into uh, the blood stuff hard around that time. Really? The gangbanging okay. stuff hard around that time. So even during while you in the NBA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, when I got when I went to Indiana, I brought ten of my friends with me. Got them different apartments. I had some staying with me. I had about 10 guys out there. The worst decision. Some of them was wow. family, some of them was friends. But uh, this was my first big contract. Okay. I Remember, mean, when I, I was expected to get my big contract after we won the championship in San Antonio, but Pop didn't pay me. He tried to lowball me. <laughs> so I went to Atlanta for one year. Yeah. And I, I think that after the second half of the season, I was sixth in the league in scoring. Uh, so, and I got my money from Indiana that year. But I went there just with the wrong attitude. You know, I'm, I'm just getting all this money. You know, I was I, I remember when I first walked in the locker room in Indiana, I tied a red bandana around my locker. Oh, wow. And it was there it was there half the season. I remember Don, I told somebody a story recently that Donnie Walsh came in there and told me, like, look, Jack, okay, can't you gotta take that down, bro. You know, it's uh, enough is enough. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I didn't understand what I was doing, you know. I'm I you know, I realized that when Donnie Walsh, because I respect him world out of Donnie Walsh. And uh, he broke it down to me and all stuff. So I understood that I was I was out of control. We all were out of control. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to go to cities at the whole team and the clubs party. And, like, we we were definitely out of control. And if social media was out that day, a lot of our careers would have been messed up. Wow, wow. Um, Westbrook, what's your take on him? Are you getting a lot of criticism? I love for, him. Yeah, go, go ahead. I love him to death. Uh, I love his passion for the game. You can't teach. Uh, I mean, he, he he's a rare guy. I don't think Billy Donovan is the coach for him. Okay. I think Billy, Billy Donovan is terrified of him. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's not the type of coach that Russell needs. Russell needs a coach that can pull his reins back a little bit. You know, the offense they ran this year was the best offense to run to not win. <laughs> uh, you, had, you didn't have Melo posting up any. I love Russ, man, the average triple-double two years in a row. Uh, it, how can you not love a guy that wants it and that plays that hard? You, people have to understand how hard it is to get a triple-double let alone to average it for 82 mm -hmm. games. Mm -hmm. uh, this kid is special, man. If, if A guy I would love to play with. I'd love to play with, and I, I would love to go to the wall with him and have his back. Now, he mentioned after their series, uh, it was during the series with Utah, when he got into it with the fans, that the type of stuff he was hearing from fans. Mm -hmm. How much negative stuff do you – and obviously fans from other teams going to boo you and say stuff, 
But does it really get nasty at times? Oh, yeah. I mean, welcome to my world. Nobody got booed more than when men run, <laughs> especially after the brawl, everywhere we went. But it should, sometimes it should be motivation. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times when they get to talk to me, they get me going. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. I, I love shutting the crowd up. I did that a lot of times in my career. That's the best feeling in the world, shutting the, uh, the uh, you on the road and shutting the crowd up. But you, with, with Utah, for sure, I've heard racial slurs. Okay. I t I, like I said, I, I played there, you know, put it like this. Let me ask you a question. We just reverse, reverse world. If LeBron, LeBron James was playing in Toronto last night, a guy who's in TV camera, so every time the team shoots a free throw, you see this guy. Okay. He has a life-size cardboard cut out, cut out of LeBron with LeBron's face on it and a jail uniform holding it up. The first time that came on camera, the second time, the NBA would have told somebody, take that yeah, down. Uh, Toronto Raptors are Cleveland. Somebody, you got to take that down. This is a... A guy had that up in the playoffs, under the goal, the whole game with my face on it. Nobody said nothing. Wow. Right? Wow. So he wasn't, uh, I saw it, my mom was hurt about it. I went and signed it for the guy after the game. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Because he wasn't the guy screaming racial slurs. He was just a diehard Utah fan. Okay. So he was honestly just being a fan. He wasn't trying to demean me in any, any way. He didn't say anything disrespectful, you know, and I, we kind of laughed about it after because Think about it. I was arrested. I did do something <laughs> stupid to get arrested. So I went and signed it. And me and him had a great conversation. But during the time in Utah, it's other fans that are totally out of line. Okay. I hope your kid die. Uh, wow. all kind of, oh, yeah, all kind of stuff. And it's not just in Utah. The racial stuff, yeah. But the, the other stuff about uh, your kids and your family, that's, that's happened in a lot of rooms. I heard so much stuff in Detroit. Oh, uh, yeah, Detroit that was time, crazy. But people, what people don't understand is I'm loved in Detroit. I, oh, I'm always in Detroit. So it had nothing to do with the city. Yeah. It was more of that situation where the guy threw the beer, you know? So, but you have to have tough skin. But in Utah, yeah, I mean, it's, it gets bad there. It definitely gets bad. Two, two athletes, Dante DiVincenzo from Villanova, mm -hmm. who helped him win the championship I this like year. I like his game. Yeah, yeah, he's nice. It'll be interesting to see what he can do in the league. Right. You know? um, Josh Allen, football player. Yes. They recently had issues where they had tweeted the N-word, you know, years ago while they were in high school, I think. Mm -hmm. And you had an interesting take, at least I think it was on DiVincenzo. Mm -hmm. You didn't have that much of a problem with it. Can you, at least I think yeah, I heard you talking about that. Yeah, because it, 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 it's different, okay? Me, I'm a grown man. I'm 40 years old. I tell people I, I never made an All-Star game. I never made first team All-NBA, nothing like that. But I'm first team All-Common Sense, <laughs> Okay. I grew up around a guy named John Biddix, who's probably my best white friend. I used to love him because he stayed a little bit out the hood. He had a pool and all that. But he grew up around black people. Yeah. I had other guys that live in the projects that's white, that go through more stuff than my black friends that's, that's, that's in the ghetto that's around. He's probably the only white person there. He probably say it because we probably called him that 200 yeah. times yeah. by talking to him because he's like our brother. You know, so I know the difference if a white guy that I grew up with is calling me the N-word, saying, like, what's up, my N? Then somebody calling me the N-word. It's a mm -hmm. difference. I know when it's racial and when it's a term of endearment, because that's what we use it for as a term of endearment. Mm -hmm. So if it's said to me by somebody I don't know, I know if they're being racial or not. You know what I'm saying? Because you, if you don't know me, yeah. you have no reason to yeah. be saying it to me. Yeah. So the guys that are comfortable saying it to me that I grew up with, they understand why they're comfortable because I've been around you my whole life. I know you're not saying it demeaning my race, yeah. you know. And the people, if you're an adult and you don't know the difference between somebody saying it as a term of endearment or to belittle you and belittle your race, then you have the problem. Nah, you make a good point. Like, I, I'm of the impression, I wish we, I wish, you know, look, if you black, you got family and friends that say it. It's just, it's like home. You can't whatever. help it. Yeah, exactly. You can't help I, I got, it. But I'm, That's what I was called as a kid. Yeah, yeah. Get your it's, neck <laughs> head in here. That, that was our name. Everybody was called that. It was, so it wasn't, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it, it wasn't wrong. It wasn't nothing wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be that. Yeah. To this nah, day, I mean, I'm proud to be that. I mean, I, I'm of the impression, I wish we as African Americans would stop using it. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I don't want to hear whites use it. Right. But I do understand context. Mm -hmm. I, I understand it's worse if a white person use it's different if a white person mm -hmm. use it and a black person use totally it. Totally different. Even though I don't really like hearing the, the black say it. Right. 
Um, I'd rather us call each other brother. Mm -hmm. You know, that was that was my and, thing. And that word is getting bigger now because we all trying to get away from exactly. saying it. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. But I'm with you. I do see what you're saying because a word is defined by its context. Right. And when I see a Kendrick Lamar concert and he got the crowd, which is mostly white, chanting it word the N-word. Word. Exactly. And like encouraging it. Or, you know, Travis Scott or somebody encouraging it. Or we write the lyrics we want people to know the lyrics, sing our songs, mm -hmm. buy our records, and we saying it. I'm just saying, like you said, every time a white person saying it, they ain't saying it as a racist at comment. All. At a all. lot of times they saying it like we and you know, white people will call white people that. Like right. like cats that grew up that way. I heard I've heard yeah, that. Yeah, or exactly. blacks will call whites that. Right. Like, and so again, I don't really want to hear it from anybody, but I think we being disingenuous if we got some of our rappers and celebrities encouraging whites to say it at concerts and through our music. And then if they say it or tweet it, we, we act like they automatically mean it in a racist way. And, you, you and, know? And, 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 and that's what they can't do. You can't say it in your rhymes. You can't expect them to buy your music. You can't expect them to be at your concerts and not say it. Like, you it's, want it's them impossible. to know the lyrics. So at the same time, you have to have something. You have to have the smarts and the intelligence and the common sense to know when it's said in the wrong mm -hmm. way. And if you don't know that, then the problem is with you. Yeah. It's, it's not the person that's saying it, it's the problem is really with you. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a complicated, it's complex discussion. Compli yes, it's, it is. It's, 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 so, quickly, with you know basketball. Why, and, uh, I'm, and you know why it's a comment? Because none of us living today really has been through getting called it, being called that word, and meaning that you are the scum of the earth. Yeah. None of us is it's out here rare. picking cotton and being called that word. So it's it's a different time. You know, it's a different mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, playoffs, Golden State, they look good. You got them clearly? I mean, I got them clearly. I mean, uh -huh. the special stuff coming back like that. I mean, these guys, they gonna, if they lose, they're beating themselves. Um, with the, everybody talking about LeBron, they struggling. They struggling in the East, and <laughs> I don't think the teams in the East are experienced enough to beat these. The Golden State, I got the way they playing right now. I don't see nobody beating. Them. You got the Cavs in the East, though. Well, this is my thing. Indiana helped the Cavs. They gave them that series. Indiana had that series beat. Toronto starting off on a bad note. They was up twenty some points and end up giving Cleveland the game. The reason why I feel like Cleveland is gonna make it to the finals because they've been playing terrible. Indiana gave them the series, and Toronto gave them that game last night. They're, LeBron has been playing so well, they're starting to give um, Gerald Smith, Kevin Love, time to catch a rhythm. Yeah, if that right. happens, they're going right. to blow everybody out and be in the finals. So, and that's, what, that's what's starting to happen. I see Cleveland getting, getting out of the East again. My man, great Anytime, stuff. Anytime, bro. Thanks Enjoy for having it, me. For Thanks real. for having me. Definitely, definitely. All right, here we are back for another episode. We missed it last week. Welcome I was back to the West Coast, Christopher. Yeah, it's good to good be to back, Ooh, man. You've been good working be out, back. huh? It's good to be Look back. Look at those guns on my man. Knock down Jay. <laughs> My man, Jason McIntyre, you look excited. I am, dude. You playoffs, always, you full always swing. look excited, though. I mean. Playoffs are in full swing. We got great topics. Should we start with your guy, LeBron? We can start we'll wherever start you LeBron. want, man. LeBron was awful your, last night in game one against the Raptors. Awful? He was awful by awful. his standards. What? There, there's no by his standards. No, he was has he awful? set the bar was way up Was he awful here. or not? He was awful by his standards. Not by his standards. He had 26 points. Yep. He had 13 assists mm -hmm. was, or rebounds. 11 uh, what, he, yep. assists or rebounds. He had a triple-double. He hits the shot to send it into overtime uh, uh, at tied at 105. He defends the uh, all-star point guard he locked down in the Kyle fourth Lowry. quarter Ooh. in overtime and holds him to three points. Now, was he LeBron James at his best? No. no. Was he close to his best? No. no. But awful? LeBron James was good. LeBron. He was human. And he need his his teammates finally stepped up. But okay. come on. So I'll get to Triple the question, Mr. Oh, he was, he was defending very good. LeBron. Was very, you got a LeBron very, jersey under that? He was very good. That's but, all I'm but saying. But the point We're is. We're used to more, but he was very good. When LeBron is that bad, two for 18 on jumpers, one of six from the line, one of eight from deep, and the Raptors had a double-digit lead in the fourth quarter. I think this series is over. They choked. I think your guy, oh, Dwayne no. K. No, no, Were no. Were you the guy picking? I did pick the Raptors. Why, why'd you do that? Because I think LeBron is tired. Let's stay there. Okay, let's stay why there. Why in the world okay. 
would you pick the Toronto had, Raptors n- to beat the Cleveland Cavaliers it had nothing in the playoffs? to do with Cle- uh, with the Toronto Raptors. It was all about LeBron. LeBron is tired. The fatigue is real. He could do it against Indiana. He had no help from his supporting cast. I thought Toronto's depth and LeBron's fatigue would mean Toronto would win the series. It was a terrible mistake on my part. I bought into your guy, Dwayne Casey. Can you Casey. say wrong again? Hey, let me look into the camera. Dwayne Casey, who he thought was the coach of no, the year, is a gigantic no, I fraud. I had Dwayne Casey. That was one of Casey. the worst coaching jobs you, in the fourth quarter Let me tell you what I had coach of the year. Ever. Quinn Schne- Stop it. Oh my Stop gosh! It. What do you want to mean? Quinn Snyder the, was the, my coach the, uh, of the year. Brad Stevens was second. followed by a five-second violation. And that's his fault. Do you no? What about the execution? Oh my, what what about were the they players? Run? What were they running, Chris? I don't know exactly. You I'm don't not know what they were running. Doing a, did you rip Billy Donovan? Has he been a great Listen, coach? Has no, he been ran totally down different. the stretch? Billy Donovan has no control. Russell Westbrook runs Why that show. Why not? Shot. You the coach. Russell Westbrook makes the money, calls the shots. That's He's an the guy. insult right there. If you tell me the coach has no control, you the coach. Have control. No. We'll get That's to your Ru- job. We'll get to Russell but go Westbrook. Ahead. I just can't believe Casey you even was unbelievably the bad down the stretch. To they win were running series. no offense. And by the way, just a co- uh, uh, just choke job. Valanciunas missed five layups in the fourth quarter. Five. I mean, this was embarrassing. Ibaka, wide open three, clang, and then defensively, don't get me started, okay? You don't leave Kyle Korver. You don't leave J.R. Smith. Those guys get hot. It's over. Because then LeBron gets help, and Indiana stuck with them. Indiana gave Toronto the blueprint. Let LeBron have his shots. Let him wear down. LeBron took 30 shots. He missed a ton of them. 26 points on 30 shots. The defense was awful. Toronto lost the series. It would not surprise me if these frauds get swept. Sorry, go ahead. Take, take, I'm just fired up. Because I'm wrong. I was wrong about Toronto. I'm an idiot. I mean, Back if, me if, in the comments. If that were the case, I mean, you'd be fired up every every topic. I'm, I'm You're often right. Wrong. I am often right. When? You, you, I can't look. So are, is Toronto going to win a game in this series? Probably. Cleveland will probably <laughs> give them a game. Cleveland will probably give them a game. I mean, look, I'm not the Toronto backer. You are. Okay? You Don't be laughing because I say they might get a game. I went into this series thinking Cleveland would win it in six. They, it may take six. It may go five. It may be a sweep, whatever. A gentleman's sweep. But what I can't believe is why in the world you would even pick the Raptors. Let me tell you a little something about NBA basketball. Oh, here we go. Education with it Mr. Bouchard. It takes superstars yeah. to win at the high level. Every blue moon, there's an aberration. And there's a team that doesn't have superstars. Maybe once every 15 years or so. There's a team that doesn't have superstars that goes really deep. But the Toronto Raptors are a great regular season team because they play hard, contrary to what you said. And Dwayne Casey made some bad mistakes. But we, Greg some. Popovich has made mistakes. Some. Everybody has made mistakes. He is a good coach, and it's, it shows in his record. Ooh, let me they they uh, are a great regular season team. They got a couple stars. They got depth, and mm-hmm. they're well coached. But in the playoffs, you need superstars. Okay, timeout. That's let me puncture your holes in that to. real quick. The and Boston they don't Celtics, have it, so for you to who even, don't have anybody. They don't have any stars right now. They knocked off your superstar, Giannis, in the first round. The Oklahoma City Thunder have two superstars, Paul George and Russell Westbrook. They got knocked off by Quinn Snyder and his great system. Uh, Donovan well, Mitchell's they, very they, good. Don't they have a star? And Donovan is a, a rookie. He ain't star, no superstar. But he's a buddy he's star. A bu- but they he, they he knocked off a superstar. Them. Your MVP last year, Russell Westbrook. You're talking so about first, I think first seeing, round isn't deep in the playoffs. You, you getting excited about Boston because they won a round? I mean, chill with that. Uh, uh, <laughs> All right? We've seen mediocre teams get to the second no, but round. you just said superstars Yeah, and win. that's what I'm saying. Where's win Giannis? Deep. Russell Westbrook, two years in a row. I'm talking about conference finals. I'm talking about well, NBA, okay. NBA well, we're finals. We're in the second round, so. So don't, get, I, don't, don't, don't bring Boston to me because they won a first round over a, 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 a Milwaukee team that's spinning its wheels. Dude, you just said Giannis was one of the top five players in the league. You can say, say that all season. You've been saying that on this podcast all season. No, I, I, back me up. First of all, I've, I haven't done the top five on the top five players in the league. So I have not. I like Giannis, but I haven't gone. I haven't said okay. that. All right. I haven't ranked my top maybe, five. Maybe you had him as one of the best young players look, in the league. You Raptors, love Giannis. And he, I do like Giannis. 
Your Raptors are in My trouble. My Raptors. Do not associate me with uh, that team. Who'd you I pick? made a mistake. I made a mistake. Are we not? I'm human. I'm going to make some mistakes. I'm Chris. human. I made Cut a mistake. I'm wrong. I'm an idiot. I like no, that. No, no, no. All right. Let's All move right. on to the next. Are you ready to move on or you want I mean, a final word on these frauds? Look, Cavs are the superior. They have the best player by far. If he gets any help whatsoever, then they're going to demolish Sweet. the yeah. Raptors in um, short order. It, can I use the word clown show to describe the Raptors? That's what it was in the fourth I'm quarter. Just You're leading by 10 at wow. home. Where's your heart, man? Where's your loyalty? Stick by your team. Stick by your right, team. Right, you want to see heart. Here you we go. pick the rap. That was dumb. Yeah, it was. It's dumb. over. Go, I, it's I, over. I won't belabor it anymore. All right. right, let's move on to the next topic. Um, one of your favorite players in the league, Chris Russell Westbrook. Bye bye. Knocked out of the playoffs again. First round. I love how he took 43 shots in game six. I can't stop laughing at Russell Westbrook. I actually wrote for the big lead this week that I believe the Thunder should explore the idea of trading Russell Westbrook. And here's why. We just saw the Clippers give Blake Griffin a ton of money. We're going to build around Blake. Three months into that, well, this ain't working. Blake's getting old. They trade him. Russell Westbrook turns 30 in November. The man cannot shoot. In the postseason, the last two years, under 40% from the field, under 37% from three. He's a scoring machine. We get that. But... You need systems to work. They just got embarrassed by Utah and Quinn Snyder. I believe when you look at the luxury tax numbers, the top two teams are Golden State and Cleveland. They're probably going to be in the finals, right? They have been for three or four years. Number three on the luxury tax, Oklahoma City. They can't get out of the first round. They're, I think they've got to look hard inside. The, the fourth, fourth and fifth teams on luxury tax are Washington and Portland. And all we talk about is let's blow those guys up. Why aren't we talking about blowing up OKC? Paul George it's is gone. to get blown Paul up. George is gone. He out. <laughs> they they can't afford Jeremy Grant. You're stuck with Melo. Russ maybe, is go- maybe. Russ is going to be making 35 million next year, then 38 million, then 41 million. The dude can't shoot. His athleticism is going to deteriorate now that he's hitting 30. I would trade Russell Westbrook. Your thoughts, Mr. Broussard? Who are you trading him for? Oh, so you want to break down trades? Well, you you made well, a, you made a luscious proposal okay, so, in that article. But your in the thoughts, biggest. if who who would Oklahoma City be getting back for Russell Westbrook? I would look back to a cut salaries. Obviously, you don't who, want these long term names. Deals. Names. Okay, here we go. My trade proposal was to the L.A. Clippers. You send Russ home. Names. You get Tobias Harris and Danilo Gallinari. I know they're not stars. Okay. That's gonna no. Sa- wait a minute. Wait that's a minute. gonna satisfy no. people in the heartland. Well, I mean, they're already Tobias out in the first Harris, round. Who wait, I wait. like is a but good player, here's but the, not here's a the star problem. like Russ. If you can get their two lottery picks they've got this year, twelve and thirteen, maybe you can get so Colin. Let's Se- become the Sacramento Colin Sexton Kings. Sexton in the draft. Let's become the Phoenix Suns. You might as well be. Let's you're getting the bounce. Orlando Magic. You're getting bounced in the first round anyway. What's the cost? There's a value and, in that. Well, there's not a value when you're the third in luxury tax and your owner's got to write millions let me, of let checks. Me, let me share something with you, son. Okay, fire away. So first of all, do you like the idea the, of trading it, No. Okay. No. All right, defend it. Should the Phoenix Suns have... Was the, was the Charles Barkley era in Phoenix worthless? Charles Barkley took Phoenix to the finals, did he not? Yeah. Okay. Is Russ getting out of the first round? Did Russ not help them get to the finals well, before? Please. Hold on, hold on. Did he? <laughs> well, like six years ago with okay. Kevin Durant but, but and James yes, Harden? Yes or no? Yeah, six okay. years okay. ago. Okay. Uh, that's what your argument is? Was the is? Allen Iverson era in Philadelphia worthless? Allen Iverson got them to the finals. It was great. I don't even want to have to ask. Y- you're the same comparing question. apples to great. No, no, I'm not. Because Allen Iverson got to one finals. Russell Westbrook got to one finals. If you look at Allen Iverson's career, other than that year in the finals, they were second round out, first round out, sometimes not even Iverson making the playoffs. was number one so when he got them to the finals. Me, Barkley was number one. Time, one. Russ was number one two time. on that team. One, Kevin Durant was the number one on that team. Patrick Ewing. <laughs> was that era wasted? Was the was that a waste? Oh, you're comparing 1990s Answer basketball to me. now. Was that a waste? Oh my God, no! Was Steve Nash's time in Phoenix a waste? Uh, they didn't get to the finals. It was a great run. So, so was it a waste? I, you're comparing winners Answer to a me. loser. Answer. Why is Steve Nash a winner? Steve Nash won two MVP awards and got them to, I believe, the conference semifinals and the conference finals, right? They got to, with, with Omari Stoudemire, Sean Marion, they never got to the NBA Finals. Okay, Russell can't get out of the first he's, round. He's been further 
than Steve Nash. He had Victor Oladipo. It didn't work. He had Paul George. It didn't now, work. Victor o- what else are you going to do now? Listen what? to me. Victor Oladipo you, is an all-NBA player. Do not no, disrespect Your me. argument is way off. First of all, you tell me Iverson and Barkley got teams to the finals. Yeah. So did Westbrook. Oh, stop. Then when I, is, hold on. That's... Then when I bring up Steve Nash, you say Steve Nash was a winner. But Russell Westbrook's a loser. But Russell Westbrook has been further in the playoffs than Steve Nash. No, and don't give me, is... don't give me Westbrook had Durant because Steve Nash no. had a prime Amari Stoudemire, prime Sean Marion, Joe Johnson, and still never got to the finals. So your logic I is think off. You're dealing hold on, with hold on, stuff hold on. that's so old. You're calling. I, what my point is this: a franchise is not unsuccessful. Of an era is not worthless just because you don't win a championship. Utah has never, never won a championship. <laughs> is that a worthless friend? Should they it just sell the, the Hold on, hold on. Should they just okay, get rid of the friend? They went get to the out finals the first round. They went to the finals twenty years ago yeah, with Carl Malone and John. Stockton. Indiana has never. Won a championship. Yeah, what happened with Paul George? He said, I'm out of here. They traded him. They're my starting point, over. My point, son, is this. Are you son to me. Okay. Everybody's not. Now, OKC can't come out and say this, but it's a business. No. Everybody is not going to win a championship. There are successful franchises that have never, I just brought up two, Utah, Indiana, that have Phoenix, that have never won a championship. It's a business. It's about putting butts in the seats, okay. too. Oklahoma may never win a championship. So it's not about no, no, no. losing they money. They may never be. Gonna, and you talk about business. They're losing money because of the luxury tax. You can, de- losing you can, money. You can decrease your payroll. Okay. But you, what you have right now is a super-duper star. You have a first ballot Hall of Famer. You have a future icon. You have a guy that Can't the, shoot. the state loves. They see him as loyal. They see him as sticking around when everybody else wanted to leave. And they, as long as he is there, they will have sell out crowds. Such a and most likely, attitude. and most likely, they will make the playoffs. Most likely. Now, oh. my point, there are look, so Memphis, how are you gonna build? How, how are you fixing this dumpster in Memphis, fire? In Memphis, how far did they get with Zach? And Mark Gasol and Mike Conley. I think they got they out of the first love, round. They, they love the those round. guys yeah. because they know we're going to be in the playoffs every year. We're going to be competitive, and we're going to have hope. That's it. You, is there hope you, in OKC? You, yes or no? You want, is there hope in OKC? Yes, yes. As long as you have a superstar, there can be hope. You, But this is what you want. This is what you want. You want Oklahoma City to get rid of its superstar Start that the over. fans love Start and over. become the Orlando Magic. No. Become the Phoenix Suns. Why can't become they, the Sacramento why Kings. Why can't they become the Utah Jazz? Utah lost Gordon Hayward in free agency, drafted Utah wisely. Utah go their to the coach bottom. is incredible. Yeah, exactly. They were good, then they lost their superstar. What? The Utah Jazz, how are they in better shape than Oklahoma City? Well, they got out of the first it's, round last year. Are they going to win a They're championship? They're second round this year. Are they going to win a championship? I don't know. Donovan Mitchell could lead them to a championship. Are they going to win they a championship? They will win a championship before OKC. That's 100,000% accurate. They just yeah, okay. beat them in the playoffs. My point is they're, home court they're essentially the same place. Utah is a good franchise. Hold up, hold Utah, up. Utah, hold on. The Carl Malone Stockton era, was that a waste? That was awesome. They went to the finals. Did You're they win a ring? Team that's Did they the win a ring? Round. No, they My look- point to you is don't tell me just because a guy's not going to lead you to a championship that you should jettison. So, Chris, it sounds like, Chris, you're what, you're like, if you win a ring, great. If you don't, you're in the same as lost in the first round, drafting in the lottery, or losing the finals. Is that what it is? No. What I'm saying is I would rather be a team like Oklahoma City that has a superstar that fans love, that's going to sell out the arena, that's going to make us relevant, and we get to the playoffs every year than the Orlando Magic, the Phoenix Suns, the Sacramento Kings. What about the Utah Hold on, Jazz? you're looking at – Utah is mediocre too. They about to get swept or beaten five, okay? That's real exciting. Well, at least they're in the second round. So what? My point is <laughs> you, you acting like Philadelphia is the norm. Philadelphia is the aberration. I, I'm Most of thing. these teams go to the bottom, get a bunch of lottery picks, and stay at the bottom. Right. Most of them stay at the bottom. How long has Charlotte been out of the playoffs? How long has Detroit been out of the playoffs? I mean, I'm just saying 
I would rather be relevant and have a superstar. And I'm going to ride this Russell Westbrook okay. era. All right. And uh, I'm let not going to wrap this up dude's on this. Been, so that's what so I'm saying. So they're going to lose Paul George. We can agree on that? Yeah, go ahead, okay. Paul. Are they making the playoffs stay. next year, the same roster, no Paul George? They can. They Did they do it last year without can Paul George? Wager? Can we make a wager? Did, hold on. Did they do it last year without Paul George? Yeah, they did. Okay, so why can't they do okay. it next year? I will bet you right here and now on the show. I don't even know who the Lakers are getting. They will make the playoffs and have a better record than OKC next year. I'm going blind. That's foolish. Oh, yeah. Okay, you're scared. I'm scared, scared of the Lakers. I'm the scared. All right, Chris Broussard, let's wrap up. Uh, final question here. Gosh, this has been good. It's good to have him back. <laughs> uh, Charles Barkley, can I call him your guy or not really? You can call him my guy. You like got Chuck. a cell phone number? I like Chuck. You guys tight? So Charles Barkley, mm, you know, he made some comments last night after Draymond Green mixed it up with uh, Rajon Rondo. Did I say that right? Rajon? Okay. Rajon, Rajon. He, he said, I don't have the exact quote, but it was something along the lines of somebody should hit him, and then he went on to say, I would punch him in the face. I want to punch I him. I want to face. punch him in the face. And people seem to be freaking out because that's what they do on social media, Chris. I personally don't think Barkley crossed the line. I think he's a, you know, this is what he does. This is his brand. He's shock jock, entertainment, former tough guy in the NBA who famously got in many fights in the league. And this is what he's paid to do. He's Be an paid, entertainer. He's paid to say he, he wants to punch people. He's paid to say provocative things that get people tuning into the show that wins Emmy Awards. That's what he does. That was, Him and that Shaq. Was, that was too far, man. Why? You, you do not go on television and say you want to punch another man. If you're a broadcaster, a man you cover... You're saying you want to punch him. Unless you're going to go punch him. Was Draymond, not laughing? Draymond was absolutely right. Yeah, Draymond Unless was, I like Barkley what he said. is going to see Draymond, and if the Golden State, which they will, gets to the conference finals, he will see Draymond plenty. Because TNT will be doing those games live from the arena. I want to see Bar, and I like Barkley. He's not. But I want to see him go up to Draymond and punch He's him. He's not. He's on even, talk. even go up to Draymond and Act bad. Jump bad. Stop. You ain't got to punch him. Well, then why are you saying it? Because that's what his job is. Say no. provocative things. Why didn't Shaq say it? You why didn't with Kenny a lot of people at another it? network who say same provocative stuff going who? after Kevin Durant? Uh, I don't want to say his name who on this. Who said they want to punch him? Uh, he didn't say punch, but he said stuff about Kevin Durant. Uh, I'm not going to mention the guy's name. These, that's what these oh, guys oh, do. Oh, they who, go on who, TV who and on radio. violent? They're not going to get violent, Who but you go on they TV and say violent. inflammatory stuff. Oh, stop. That's have what you, they do. Has anybody at this work, network ever said they want to punch a I guy don't think they so. cover? Do we have a Charles have you Barkley ever said at this that? network? I've never said that's not my DNA. I don't. You know, I've never been in a real, real fight where I'm throwing fists. I'm, that's that's surprising. <laughs> I, I, I know because I, I, I can I can be combative, but I don't. I, I'm smart. Nobody ever wins a fight. Okay, Charles Barkley knows that. Do you no, know, you win fights. No, you don't because you, you win the you fight. Do. You might As get arrested. You kid, you win fights. All right. You, oh, you, you win fights. Yeah, you've been in a lot of scraps. fights. Huh? You got some wins. Yeah, I, I can throw these things. <laughs> <laughs> now so, you win some, you lose some, but. Barkley, look, I like Chuck, and you're right. He's off the chain. He says what he, you know, different things, and I love it. It's great, but this time he went too far, and he needs to apologize. You think? Oh, yes. He, you don't do again unless you gonna see Draymond and do something about it. But other than that, you need to apologize. Hmm. You don't go say you gonna hit another man. It's a grown man. With a family, you don't go and say you gonna hit him I don't unless think, you really oh, go back it up. Family, you're right. Yeah, he does. I mean, just don't don't go there. Like you can criticize his game. You can even say, you know, I'm I don't, I'm not a fan. I don't really like his antics or whatever. But to say you want to hit him, what NBA player do you currently want to punch? None. <laughs> <laughs> do See, you? you no, I guess you want to punch no, Westbrook. I do. I would not want to punch Westbrook. Nah, I, no, I, I mean, I, he's a good obviously, player. you never got in a fight. Well, I mean, I, why would I want to punch a human being? This is what I don't <laughs> say this shock value garbage that Charles Barkley says. Barkley, and I think you said Barkley doesn't want to hit anybody either. He doesn't want to so hit So why'd he say he's it? He's a 50 year old man. Why so, he, so why'd he. That's my because point. He's Be a paid mature to say adult. crazy, no, wacky stuff. No, you're not paid to say you're going to hit somebody. Guess what? Everybody's talking about it. Charles Barkley's name is in the headlines, and oh, they come love on. that, His name man. is always in the headlines. We would be talking about TNT. They win Emmys. They're a great show. Whether he says he's going to hit somebody or not, that was too far. Okay. You don't have to say you're going to hit somebody. And you know I'm right. <laughs> Well, Especially to, being the pacifist I, I that you've been your whole life. I wanted to give you a victory since I whooped your butt on the Raptors and Russell Westbrook. 
can't wait for the comments on this one, Chris. <laughs> he lives for y'all comments. I want <laughs> no, you to I know it's, it's Hey, it's I sad, sent our producer a whole list comments. of them. We're going to air them at some point, right? I mean, we got a lot of good know, comments. Look, it's my yeah, show. Relax, dude. Relax. All right. All right. Hey. We glad you joined us for Knockdown, Jay. Oh, next Contra week. Look, good. we do get along. We, hey, we, this we're going to talk Steph Curry like next him. week. Some crazy stuff comes out of yeah, his yeah. mouth. But I my text man. him during games. It's fun. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of In The Zone. We had a tremendous interview with Cap- Steven Jack. Jackson. Yeah, uh, he was awesome. The top five, of course, through the, through the roof again. And then Knockdown, Jay. Go to Apple Podcasts. Go to SoundCloud. Leave us five stars. And leave us a great comment and and believe it, your boy will be reading them. Probably. All right, so we'll see you guys next week on In the Zone.